Hi, this is your host Bhartia and welcome to TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us once again, Kit Merker, Chief Growth Officer at Noble9. Kit, it's good to have you on the show. Great to be back. Nice to see you. Yeah, and today we are going to talk about the new feature that you folks announced this week, Service Label Analyzer. Talk a bit about the announcement. Yeah, we announced a new capability in Noble9, which is a Service Level Analyzer, as you said. And what it's really doing is taking the uh, service level data that you already have and helping you set good SLOs on that uh, service level objectives on that data. Can you go a bit deeper into it and also talk about what exactly is service level analyzer? Yeah, so I mean, if you kind of start from the problem that we're we're trying to solve here, it's when you are trying to define service level objectives, which are basically reliability or performance targets uh, for your service, one of the challenges people have is, well, what's a good SLO, right? Should it be 99% or 99.9% or 99 percent right? These kinds of questions. And, and that's kind of a you know simplistic way of looking at it, like how many nines uh, do I need? And what you know what we found is that um, people need a little bit of help. And we can figure out, and not necessarily like you know, a magic wand, but we can point you at the historical data and do some statistical analysis on it and present to you what if scenarios about uh, setting different SLOs. So you say, okay, what if I had said, I wanted a three nines SLO on maybe you know fifty milliseconds, and what uh, Noble Nine Service Level Analyzer will do is present you know here's where your error budgets would have been, here's where you would have violated the SLO, here's where you've been alerted, and give you that kind of historical view. And based on that, you can use that as a really smart starting point so that you can just set the SLO based on these different um, what if scenarios, and that helps you tune the SLO without having to do a lot of kind of um, you know analysis yourself. It gets you started uh, much much faster. And we had a number of uh, customers in the beta that I think really uh, benefited from this tool. It helps them move a lot faster. Uh, it helps them get uh, up and running very quickly. So it's really about um, setting reasonable objectives for reliability and performance across your service uh, using historical data. That's that's what it's all about. Can you talk about uh, the evolution of this project, this feature? This uh, Because when we look at, you know, we have had so many discussions around SLOs so that we can also understand, hey, this is where the market is going and that's where, you know, Noble9 is kind of evolving its solutions to help customers wherever they are in their journey. So, you know, when we first started Noble9 back in uh, 2019, a big part of our vision was um, to build a general purpose service level objective platform. We saw a, a gap in the market because, you know, we all uh, had experienced the the joy and wonder of being inside of the Google machine and uh, the uh, amazing uh, reliability and and the engineering reliability that it is built there. And um, what what has happened over the last few years is we've talked to customers and gotten adoption and built you know community and other things like that. Um, is we figured out that you got to make it really accessible for people. You know, everybody wants in theory, to say, oh, you know, we want five nines on everything. And it's not, it's actually not even desirable. Um, in fact, for many services, uh, it's incredibly expensive to try to to hit that number. And, uh, you know, three nines or two and a half nines is, is more reasonable in a lot of cases. And also, if you measure in different places, you can tune your SLOs and get a more fine grain view of the world. So while companies are struggling um, to maintain and earn trust uh, with their customers, and we've seen a number of reliability uh, outages and things like that in the news. And I think everybody wants to avoid being uh, that, you know, that person. Uh, reliability engineering is an important part of delivering a service. It is funny, I was thinking about this actually the other day because um, people are asking about like, you know, sort of the Henry Ford faster horses. And it's interesting because um, people needed cars, but they actually really needed reliable cars. And I think you can credit Henry Ford in some ways with building, you know, reliability into the um, the auto manufacturing process. And in some ways, a more you know significant contribution to um, to automotion that you know than just uh, or an auto is automotion a word to automobiles than uh, the actual car itself, right? It's kind of easy to imagine a car. It's hard to imagine a process by which you could build. You know, millions of reliable cars, and you know we've seen that evolution with Toyota and other other uh, methods of engineering. And I think of our reliability engineering in a similar way, right? Like anybody can put up a website. Um, what's really hard is putting up a website that can stream videos to millions and millions of people all over the world. Um, and uh, you know, I feel like there's also Murphy's law involved too, right? Like that one customer comes and uses your service at exactly the wrong time and gets hit with an outage. Um, so this is really what we're trying to do is to sort of tame that. We're trying to help people do that. Now, what's happened in the market, I would say, over the last few years is observability and infrastructure has really evolved. And we've seen a lot more players show up. We've seen a lot more open source investment. 
Um, SLOs have gone from something that you know we've talked about and people scratch their head and say, oh, we mean SLAs, to now being something uh, we, you know we generally run into people who have heard about it um, and who understand the methodology. Now the challenge is implementation. And what we've seen, I think especially here we are in early 2023, we know the challenges uh, facing many enterprises. They got to keep up with the competition in terms of innovation. Their complexity is going crazy. Um, they have uh, less staff and resources to get done what they need to get done, and they can't suffer an embarrassing outage. Um, they really do need to engineer reliability into their process. And that, that I think, is what's leading to this incredible demand for, uh, for SLOs and observability tools and cloud solutions, et cetera. Um, and we're benefiting from that uh, that tailwind right now, which is really, uh, I think, really great. Where does this fit into when we look at the larger picture or is, uh, the cultural you know, discussion we have, platform engineering, DevOps, uh, sorry, how does that, how does it enable those teams also to to kind of improve their own uh, work? Well, haven't you heard that DevOps is dead? I think that's the I think that's the obligatory joke, right? Well, it's no, it's, I'm of course I'm joking. You know, the the interesting thing about um, these different roles is I really think that they. Um, they come from a similar goal, but they come with different ideas about what is the right approach to achieve it, right? What we really want, right? Like check, you know, how do we check the box, right? We want, we want to deliver innovation as quickly as possible to customers and not slow our teams down. We want to ensure that our services are up and running so customers are not frustrated and annoyed. Um, we want to make sure that the team has, you know, everything they need to empower themselves to deliver quality, that they're not interrupted in their sleep, right? That they're working on meaningful projects. Um, and we want to we want to do that efficiently. We don't want to waste time and money working on things that are irrelevant. Everybody agrees on on sort of what the outcome is that they want. Where I think there's some disagreement is, you know, what do we call that first of all, and how do we organize it? And even within you know these sort of subdomains, right? There's different philosophies for how DevOps should work. There's different philosophies for SRE. Do you have you know, embedded reliability engineers, or do you have uh, centralized reliability engineers? And I have seen, you know, the platform engineering kind of came out of uh, out of nowhere in some ways because it's been around, uh, you know, forever, um, but it's recently become more of a thing. And I think part of that is a, a recognition that uh, especially large organizations have a set of shared services, a shared capabilities that everybody relies on. They all need cloud, they all need databases, they all need identity, they all need you know, metrics and observability. They need all these things to do, to do whatever it is they're doing. And previously, you might have thought of this as kind of your data center team or your NOC or your sort of like operations team. And increasingly, what people are trying to do is to, you know, to productize that into a platform. And um, every enterprise and every company has slightly different needs for a platform. Um, they might be able to get everything out of the box from an Amazon or a Google or a Microsoft. More likely, though, they're going to have some constraints where they're going to have to stitch together multiple solutions, um, certain configuration, certain you know, policy, and that becomes the platform within an organization. And I, what I think is, personally, what I like about um, the platform engineering concept uh, is really this concept of ownership, right? That you have this thing that you own. And you know, if you're in reliability engineering or DevOps, um, what you own is a little bit fuzzier, right? Like I own reliability. Okay, well, what do you? What does that actually mean, right? What do you do uh, to to prove that? What's the value you can point to? Um, and, it, and I'm not saying it can't be done. I think it's much easier to point to that value when you're building stuff. And what's hard today is that you know it's a little bit difficult to justify building custom you know, infrastructure when there's so much readily available on the market. How folks can get started? Is it part of, you know, your offerings or you have, they have to buy something separate? Talk about that. So we have uh, three tiers to our product and one of them is a perpetual free tier. We just announced that actually in uh, November. So now you can sign up at noble9.com. You can get a free edition, uh, 20 SLOs for free forever. Um, if it works with all the data sources, SL analyzer, service level analyzer is included in that. Uh, so you can use it for free on your 20 SLOs. Sign up and try it out. If you've got some data in Datadog or Prometheus or whatever, you can start uh, getting your SLOs analyzed. We also have a Teams edition. You can buy it on Amazon Marketplace. You can buy it direct. And we have an enterprise edition for companies that really need the full meal deal. But um, uh, you know, the right size for any team, it can fit your budget, give you the capabilities you need to get started. And of course, uh, we, we'd love to get feedback about uh, the product. So if you just try it out for free, kick the tires and tell us what you like or what you hate, uh, we obviously would love to have that feedback. Okay, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about survey sort of level uh, analyzer. Uh, I really appreciate your insights. And of course, as you said, you know, there are more announcements. So I'm already looking forward to talk to you soon again. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Great to see you.